Just laying there. 
listening to the stranger breathe. Then all of a sudden the person started screaming and she was able to open her eyes. The man sitting in the chair had red eyes, dark hair, and a dark goatee. It was the same guy from my dreams. We tried to figure out what all what it all meant and pretty much came up with nothing. I mean Obviously, something paranormal, perhaps even demonic, was messing with us. We decided that we would go to church that following Sunday and see if that helped at all. We also died to the Christian books to get a couple of crosses to put around. Though I wasn't religious, I was open to anything at that point. The next few nights, we got were there, 
upside down, but the cross was nowhere to be found. I kept looking and looking, and right when I was about to give up, I heard a huge bang coming from the closet in the hall where we had thrown the Ouija board. I walked slowly to the closet telling myself it was stupid for even going near it, but I, it was like I was compelled to look. Slowly, I opened the door, and there, sticky tacked to the inside of the closet, was the cross, upside down. I went to go grab it, and it was as hot as fire. I couldn't hold it in my hand. It was so hot. Just Nicholas got pulled again, and all of the blinds shot up at once. I had never actually seen them open on their own. They'd just be open when I got home or woke up. I could barely breathe. I kept clawing at the necklace, trying to get it to loosen. All of a sudden, the chain broke and fell to the ground. I could hear someone or something screaming as the door slammed shut, then opened, then slammed again. The door to my room slammed, and I could hear paper being ripped by posters on the wall. The images started up again, but they seemed to be right there in the hallway, not just in my mind. I ran out of the apartment without even shutting the door. I flew over to Liz's house. I think she took one look at me and knew stuff was going down. She ran downstairs. I'm sorry. She ran upstairs and called up a friend of hers who went to a nearby Catholic university. She recommended a priest who was about an hour from us that specialized in demonology. Liz called him and the and explain what was going on. She told him all about the Ouija board and Will and me and the apartment, everything. She said he could make it to our town in about an hour. That was the longest hour of my life. We waited, not really talking. The squirrels were on the roof and in the walls, taking their way to freedom, apparently. It was so loud. The pebbles on the window started up as well. There was also there also seemed to be a lot of bees buzzing around our windows. We just sat there, her silently praying and me trying not to completely lose my mind. We both jumped when we heard a thud. The cross we had put near her front door, it just fell to the ground. Neither of us made any attempt to go and put it back. Finally, there was a knock on the door. Friar Bob came in, and he didn't really say much. He nodded to both of us and started right away with the holy water. He then said a few prayers and performed the anointing of the sick on the both of us. I know I was probably paranoid, but I could feel him watching me very closely with furrowed brows. He gave all the St. Michael medals to wear for protection. I remember thinking, I oh, hope this one doesn't try to strangle me too. Then he asked to go back to my apartment to bless it and to get rid of the board. He told Liz to stay at her apartment for some reason and follow me back to my apartment. I think Liz was really she didn't have to go back there. She was convinced and saw that it made her sick. As we walked up to my apartment, the fire bomb proceeded to vomit all over the sidewalk. I rushed to see if he was okay. He just held up his hand and kept going. Up one more time right near the door. When I opened the door, I could barely breathe. But when I I could see my breath. The outside temperature was in the 60s, but the apartment was freezing. He immediately put on his stall and started 
splashing holy water all over the place, murmuring prayers and laughing. The horrific images took over my mind and all I could do to stay was somewhat aware of what was going on. I could see Friar Bob stop there at a closet with a Ouija board as if he knew it was in there, but kept walking around the place, splashing holy water everywhere. I could hear his screams and wails. It was terrifying. Finally, after going through three bottles of holy water, he came over to me and prayed over me in Latin. I can't say for sure. It was an exorcism, but it was some definite hardcore brain. We went on. He went on for an hour. His hands over my head and Latin spilling out of his mouth. Sometimes when the images in my head would get worse, I could swear he somehow sensed it and would talk loud with more authority. Finally, he finished praying over me and I said the Ouija board was in the closet. I nodded, scared to go in there again. He opened the door and door and threw it open. He took the board out of the box and started to pray. All the blinds came crashing down, block out to the new sun. It didn't seem to be his right above, but I pretty much kissed my pants. He then pulled out a fourth bottle of holy water and started fixing it on the board. Everywhere the holy water hit the board turned red. I'm not going to say for sure it was blood or anything like that. I was on the other side of the room, but it was definitely red. This was the only time Friar Bob seemed to falter. The only time he was surprised, so to say. But he kept going, praying and splashing it with water. About ten minutes he stopped. He turned and looked at me. This isn't working. I'm going to have to take this with me to dispose of it. Please, please take it. I don't want it here anymore. I basically sobbed. He wrapped his stole around it, put it in his bag along with the pointer thing and the box. As he went to leave, he turned to me and blessed me one more time. He then looked me straight in the eyes and grabbed my shoulder tightly. Sarah, sometimes when I come out to do a blessing like this, things get worse before they get better. This is going to be one of those times, but have faith that it will get better. And with that, he was out the door.
across the pathway panel. I have bruises everywhere. My eyes were constantly bloodshot from lack of sleep. I am sure I look adorable. No, I know I look adorable. I've since deleted and untagged all photos of me from that time on Facebook because I don't want people thinking I was in some sort of abusive relationship or some weird sex trade. My roommate at the time eventually came home from break, but was never at the apartment. She stayed at her boyfriend's place at night. We weren't that close, but we were still decent friends and lived together well. I tried to see if she had experienced anything at the apartment. She refused to talk to me. It came time for us to renew our lease. I guess Liz, my friend who did the Ouija board with that I was sleeping in my car. She invited me over to her place one day and there on the living room floor of her tiny attic apartment was an air mattress. She had been asked, she had asked her parents who saw of her birthday. She had asked her parents for one for her birthday. We were on the same birthday, April the 16th. The same number that was frozen on the clock on the night of the Ouija board and told me I was welcome anytime, day or night. I nearly cried from happiness and gratitude. I couldn't help but feel responsible for everything. I'm all convinced so.
It was a personal victory, so to say. To do anything in my apartment, let alone mess up with a ticket like a cardboard chair. Though I am artistic and very crafty, exacto knives are my enemy. I can't cut a straight line to save my life. Nevertheless, it was close enough for my purposes. I was going to have a chair. I was going to have a sit-in. I was going to get an A and bring my grade up for at least one class. Then suddenly I woke up. I was on the floor in the living room. It took me a minute to rings. The chair wasn't even started. There was a stack of cardboard up against the wall. so far to answer 
some questions that keep coming up. This whole fiasco happened a few years ago when I was in college. It eventually slowed down and wasn't as scary, but weird things have happened ever since. It's been slowly intensifying lately, hence why I started writing down what happened at the beginning. At first, it was just a nice way to finally get my story out there without people looking at me like I was insane. Now it's getting bad again. I hope that telling people how it all started could potentially help a bit more and maybe getting advice on how to stop it again. Also, to answer another question, I completely lost my stuff, my mind, many times. I will get a bit more with this update. The guy was just gone. there and the peaceful feeling associated with him was also gone I kind of snapped out of it and realized I was still in the bathroom and that I had cuts everywhere welcome back to reality I guess I grabbed my phone and ran out of the apartment I guess the chair wasn't going to happen oh well yet another failed class I went over to Liz's house and tried to explain what had happened. Through the experience of all the blood and the laughter and whatever, I backed into was terrifying as, oh, get out. The mysterious man who randomly appeared and made everything stop for a moment gave some small inkling of hope. Maybe he would come again. Maybe he could stop all of this. Even though I felt remarkably safer at Liz's apartment, I still could not, I still could hear the squirrels scratching all night and the pebbles hitting the windows at increasingly intensity. I tried to brush it aside as we continued to talk about what had happened. Liz was pretty convinced the man I saw was an angel sent from God to protect me. Now as I said, well, I was not very before all this happened, whereas Liz was religious, not in a crazy Bible thumping kind of way, just very helpful. I don't care who it was, I just want him to come back. Scratching and the pebbles hitting the windows were getting worse and worse. I also started hearing a buzzing type sound. Liz didn't seem to hear anything. I shushed her and listened. Yep, there was definitely a buzzing sound. Now keep in mind it was about 2 a.m. in the morning in April. Not actually a popular time for bees to be buzzing about. But I guess that night it was. Excuse me, I just got off of work so I'm a little bit tired. I kind of half screamed and backed away from the window. Liz looked at me like I was insane. 